Hello, welcome to Facebook Live. I'm Mitch Nelson, Program Manager in the Division of Preventive, Occupational, and Aerospace Medicine at Mayo Clinic. I'm also an airline transport rated pilot, a flight instructor, and an aircraft owner. Today, we're discussing FAA Basic Med, which is a topic many pilots are interested in learning about as they weigh the pros and cons of this new medical qualification versus traditional FAA Class Three medicals. With me today is Dr. Clayton Cole. He is the Division Chair in Preventive Occupational and Aerospace Medicine and, our, and one of our Senior Aviation Medical Examiners at Mayo Clinic. Dr. Cole is also a fixed-wing pilot, a balloon pilot, and the President of the Civil Aviation Medical Association, whose central mission is education and working on legislation that affects aviation safety. Dr. Cole, welcome. You know, I'm certain many pilots are very eager to learn more about basic med, uh, the eligibility and process for this new alternative medical qualification. Tell us, uh, what is basic med and what does it mean for pilots considering this new medical qualification? Sure. Um, well, Mitch, uh, it's, as you mentioned, it's an alternative to traditional medical certification. And um, it came live May 1st of this year after uh, legislation that was passed last summer. And basically what it involves is uh, a different set of parameters that pilots need to accomplish in order to get what would be sort of the equivalent of medical certification, but not exactly medical certification. So for example, uh, they would need to have a valid driver's license. Uh, they would need to still have an examination by a state licensed physician, but not necessarily from an FAA designated aviation medical examiner. And then after that, they would um, proceed to do an online course, an education course, um, take a short quiz, and then uh, after that, um, have a completion certificate that they put in their logbook with the uh, physical examination checklist. All right, very good. So how do pilots determine if they're medically, if they medically qualify, if they're looking for information? On sure. So, I mean, the first thing that they would need to do is make sure they have a valid driver's license. And mm -hmm. obviously, that's a fairly low bar for mo most people. Um, the next part is is really identifying a uh, physician that's willing to do the basic med um, assessment. For for some uh, physicians, um, it's certainly something new to them. If they're not an aviation medical examiner, they may have never, you know, uh, gone through what are FAA regulations, and so they may not have a lot of comfort level with that. Um, however, once they identify a physician that will do the basic med uh, examination, um, they would then complete what's called the Comprehensive Medical Evaluation Checklist. And basically what it is is um, uh, it's, it's sort of an electronic or uh, I guess a print of paper version, but it's very similar to what they're already getting in the Class three Medical. And then the physician that sees them signs off on it, um, and uh, uh, then they proceed to go ahead and uh, complete the online course. After they finish the online course, uh, they take a quiz associated with that course, get a certificate of completion, and they're ready to go. Sure. So when pilots are weighing the benefits of basic med versus the uh, traditional class three medical, which pilots would benefit from basic med sure. over class three? So there are certain pilots, especially in rural areas where uh, aviation medical examiners might be a long distance drive to get to, that this program is really going to benefit. Um, and so we've heard from some of our patients that are out in, you know, say the middle of Wyoming uh, or uh, other, you know, say more remote areas where it might be a considerable uh, drive or effort to get to an AME. This will help prevent or, or um, stop that gap, so to speak, in that they'll be able to see their own physician to do the basic med uh, uh, examination checklist. Um, those that really don't want to do basic med would be those if, say, you're under 40 years old and you really sure. don't have a lot of health-related things. I mean, right now, a Class three medical will give you five years, whereas basic med, the, the maximum length of time, would be four years that you would need to have another actual medical checklist completed. Um, also, it's important to point out that if uh, a pilot is interested in flying anywhere outside of the uh, continental U.S., 
uh, for example, to the um, to the Caribbean or maybe to Alaska, where you have to cross into Canadian airspace. Um, basic Med does not allow for that, um, and so that's something that those pilots need to really consider. Um, the other thing is is that. Um, the parameters for basic med are such that you can only operate aircraft up to 6,000 pounds, six total occupants, and that includes the pilot, um, up to a maximum of 18,000 feet. So some pilots operate want to operate at higher altitudes than that couldn't under basic med or operate at speeds greater than 250 knots. So um, those are things that pilots need to consider if, if they wanted to operate uh, within those parameters they w would need to go to a regular class three medical sure and if they're comfortable if they have a favorite ame it would make sense for them to remain that route as yeah well. well sure i mean if you um are comfortable with your current ame you know some pilots that we've heard from sort of uh, roll their eyes and say you know i don't want to go through and take a quiz or uh, mm -hmm. do the electronic course and all that i'm happy with the way things are going right now and that's perfectly fine um, you know there is some misnomers out there you know the class three medical is not going away right and uh, so uh, all the all basic med is is yet another way that pilots uh, who are flying in the general aviation environment uh, can qualify um, to enjoy that freedom of flight that you and I both know of. Sure. So if a pilot had a previous FAA medical that was denied, suspended, or revoked, mm -hmm. is basic med an option for them? Well, basic med would be an option for them at some point. Um, if you have a suspended, denied, or revoked uh, medical certificate, it will require that you do a, a class three medical and regain that special okay. issuance before they're able to to use basic med. But once right. you do get it back um, and navigate that process, um, you wouldn't necessarily need to go back to it. You could use basic med as the alternative to medical certification thereafter. Okay. Now, there's a number of pilots out there that have a special issuance. Um, they've had a mm -hmm. medical condition. They had to go through the special issuance process. Mm -hmm. uh, what is different about the special issuance with basic med? Uh, if they have a current special issuance, uh, can they use that? And if uh, mm -hmm. maybe something new comes up. Sure. So uh, if, if, a, if a pilot uh, has in the past had a medical condition and they gained a special issuance, but say they sort of got out of flying for whatever, you know, whatever reason, as long as they have uh, a, a certificate with a special issue that hasn't been denied or revoked or suspended within the last 10 years. So in other words, um, anytime after July 14th of 2006, they'd be eligible to use basic med. Um, if uh if they didn't have, if they had a suspended or revoked uh, medical certificate, they would have to go through the process as we just talked about. Mm -hmm. So uh, a pilot always has to start with an aviation class three medical if they're just starting to learn to fly. They can't start with basic med. At Correct. This they have to go through the process at least once. And I guess another thing I would point out is, um, let's say that you 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 do elect to use the basic med alternative pathway and you fly under basic med for a while. If you develop any of several medical conditions, uh, such as certain cardiac conditions, neurologic conditions, or maybe have a mental health condition um, that's listed in the, in the basic med uh, regulation, um, you would need to get a new special issuance at that point and also attest to the fact that you are under the care of a specific sp subspecialist um, if mm -hmm. you elect to use the basic med pathway. Okay. So uh, I'm, I'm certain there's a number of physicians that are out there that basic med is new to them. They have questions mm -hmm. and uh, they may need assistance determining if a pilot is fit for flight. Sure. Uh, what resources do uh, general practitioners have available to them if they do have questions? Sure. So, yeah, um, there, there have been a lot of uh, questions within the medical community uh, in regards to, you know, what is basic med? Um, there is some pushback, I would say, in the general medical community because of the attestation statement that involves um, uh, testifying or attesting that the pilot is safe to fly at the time that they do that, uh, do the checklist. And part of that is, is that 
Um, these are fairly large aircraft, potentially, uh, carrying up to six uh, occupants. And so some um, physicians are worried about the liability, and their practices are worried about the liability associated with that. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes um, it's difficult um, when there's a lot of discretion at the hand of the provider to actually make that certification decision if they haven't been uh, in the business of doing that. So in other words, they haven't done a... Uh, commercial driver exam in the past, or maybe they haven't done FAA flight physicals, uh, haven't been an uh, aviation medical examiner in the past. And so there will probably be some, a learning curve for, for everyone doing this, and also um, uh, some potential pushback that pilots may, may sense from that. But for those uh, providers, uh, I would say that um, the guidebook for aviation medical examiners is an electronic uh, version on the FAA.gov uh, website. Uh, is an excellent resource, uh, and you know certainly the physician doing the exam, um, it's their discretion as to what testing that they would do. So, for example, if a pilot comes in and had uh, say a, a recent neurologic event, it would be perfectly acceptable for that physician to ask for additional information, uh, including but not necessarily limited to, um, you know, scans, lab tests, additional subspecialty evaluations, anything that would make it uh, comfortable for them to say, I attest that this pilot is safe to, uh, to operate the aircraft that are listed under basic med. Sure. So uh, when pilots are going in for their basic med evaluation, uh, as you had just mentioned, uh, bringing maybe lab results, uh, testing that would be important to that physician, is there anything else that they should bring with them to prepare for the visit? Well, certainly if they're not seeing the physician that normally takes care of them or perhaps uh, in a different clinic or health system where their records are not going to be in the electronic record mm -hmm. of the uh, individual they selected to do their basic med checklist. Um, it would be very important that if they have those types of medical conditions, things like you know diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, prior cancers, where they actually bring some supporting data to sort of uh, to uh, show and justify that they are safe medically to operate the aircraft uh, uh, involved in basic med. Very good. So I understand Mayo Clinic has developed an online education course, and it has a number of topics that are on this course that are required to discuss. What's unique about the Mayo Clinic course? What do you, what will pilots take away and learn from? It? Sure. So this course is going to be, um, you know, released shortly. Um, it was a little slow to the starting blocks um, uh, because of wanting to make the user experience the best that it possibly could be. Um, but I think our course is really going to emphasize. Uh, looking at risk management from the standpoint of every time that you go through and do a pre-flight, just like we, we do a pre-flight on our aircraft, we really need to be doing a pre-flight on ourselves. Okay. And, um, and that's, you know, as we sort of say in the course, you know, healthy flying is healthy living. And, and I think that's one of the things that we emphasize is that the idea of getting preventive health screening, um, you know, we want to have long, healthy lives as opposed to just getting through this flight, so to speak. Um, and so, um, you know, we talk a little bit about risk management. Uh, we talk a little bit about wanting to avoid doing things that are dumb or dangerous or different. Um, things that, as pilots, we know we, we run through the, uh, the I'm safe checklist, which many of us as pilots know that, uh, that, we, that we, it's a, a mnemonic that we run through to make sure, am I ready really to do this flight? before I jump in and just do it. So I think the course is uh, gonna uh, offer some you know, unique perspectives from a, from a medical provider perspective, including things like um, how to manage prescription and, and non-prescription drugs, to remind pilots that uh, things like uh, uh, recreational or ma uh, medical marijuana isn't legal, okay. even under basic med. And, um, and, and how to manage even prescription medications or over-the-counter uh, uh, pharmaceuticals that can cause sedation or other health effects that we may not be thinking about. Sure. With that in mind, are there any medications that really pilots fail to consider uh, when they're going flying that they should? Well, you know, and that's a great question. I, I, I think, you know, there are... 
Um, over-the-counter medicines like, for example, Tylenol PM, you know, well, what, what's the PM part? Well, really, it's, it's Benadryl. It's diphenhydramine is the generic name of it. Extremely sedating drug. And certain studies have shown that, that diphenhydramine or, or the brand name Benadryl can actually be more sedating than even uh, certain narcotics or, or anxiolytic uh, anxiety busters uh, mm -hmm. like Valium. Right. So uh, when a pilot completes the uh, physical examination and the online medical course, mm -hmm. what do they need to do to remain compliant with the basic med process? We know how it works with a traditional FAA class three medical, sure. but is, um, is there any steps that the pilot needs to take in addition to those two aspects? Sure. So um, as we said before, I mean, once the, the medical checklist is completed, once the online course and the quiz is passed, and a certificate is obtained. You, the pilot will want to take that um, certificate and the checklist and put it in their logbook. If they're using electronic logs, it's uh, perfectly legitimate for the pilot to, um, to you know, scan it or have it electronically available for inspection by the FAA if they're asked for it. Um, every four years, uh, they need to get a new checklist done. Every two years, they need to take the online course and inside the course, embedded in the courses, are an attestation statement basically saying, yes, I'm under the care of a state licensed specialist if I have any of the specifically outlined conditions, such as the neurologic, mental health, or cardiac conditions we talked about before. Um, and uh, that um, basically you are taking a liability statement that says, I'm attesting that I'm aware of the medical rules for basic med and that it's my responsibility to know those rules. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that there would be uh, some physicians, because of unfamiliarity, that they may also be reluctant to do basic med uh, in addition to versus the pilot having the traditional uh, class three medical? Well, you know, I think as we said before, I mean, there are uh, a lot of AMEs are probably not doing the basic med exam. Mm -hmm. um, they would have to do it not as an FAA designated physician, uh, flight surgeon doing it, but they would have to do it on their own accord is what the FAA is, is telling us as aviation medical examiners. And so um, I think, yeah, there, there may be some pushback there, but I think as, you know, as it gets out and some of the initial early programmatic glitches are worked out, I think more and more physicians will be more comfortable doing it, or there will be practices that, uh, for example, our practice, we, we do basic med exams. Um, it's done by our colleagues who are not necessarily aviation medical examiners, but have uh, our aviation medical examiner team there as a safety net, not only to, to make sure they're doing it right, but also to help the pilot get through the process, um, especially if they have chronic medical conditions or something about their history that's complex, where there might be a, a question of, does an additional testing need to be performed? Mm -hmm. So where can pilots learn more about basic med if they have additional questions that we did not cover today or uh, even the aviation medic or uh, physicians interested in doing the Sure. Program? Well, I think a, a great central clearinghouse is the FAA.gov website. If you go on to FAA.gov and in the search engine on the website, just type in basic med, um, it has a plethora of information, including Aviation Circular 68-1, that is a very comprehensive um, outline of what is basic med. It includes the, a copy of the checklist there. And the FAA website also has uh, forms, uh, the actual forms that you can print as a hard copy and links to the online course. So uh, we covered a number of topics today. Is there anything else that you wish to add about basic med? Well, I mean, I think we all know as uh, general aviation pilots how much we really appreciate and know um, the, you know, the, the incredible freedom that it brings about. Um, I think, you know, Mayo Clinic it has been uh, working with pilots for, you know, since the development of the Civil Aeronautics, uh, Aeronautics Board. Uh, Mayo actually had the first 10 flight examiners in the 1920s, believe it or not. And so we've been working with pilots for, you know, upwards of uh, almost 100 years. Um, there's been a lot of changes, uh, you know, over the decades. And, you know, certainly basic med is another uh, change out there. 
Um, we feel that it's going to help a lot more pilots get into general aviation. We think it's a, a wonderful thing. Um, but we also think it's important to balance that with um, making sure that from a pilot perspective that they truly are ready to go and that if they have complex medical conditions or maybe chronic medical conditions, this is probably a, a um, call to attention that it's really important to take care of yourself um, because you know you're anytime you get in that three-dimensional environment that you and I know about and being an aircraft um, it, it adds a little bit more stress and a lot more variables that we need to think about and the last thing we, that we want to be thinking about while we're actually in flight is our health so we want that as a, as a solid baseline and I think Mayo Clinic is um, really um, committed to helping all of our pilots that we see whatever level they're at sure. from an entry-level student all the way up to a professional pilot um, that they maintain a long healthy flying career very good dr. Colt thank you and Facebook viewers for joining us today you can follow us on Facebook uh, at Mayo Clinic Pro Pilot for more information, updates about basic med and other aviation topics and news that we'll share with you. You can also visit our webpage at mayoclinic.org slash ProPilot. Thank you.